it comes from seeing my dad who was a drill sergeant in the army very successful got many awards and then had a bout with cancer and he it, it, cancer won and he died at 49 so every day I wake up I could have the worst day in the world but when I wake up my eyes are open and I get up super early because I really love life Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. And here's one thing I know. I get messages almost every single week because I'm here every single week at Tani Sushi Bistro. So, so many of you know that I love the food here. I bring the family here every single week, which I know you appreciate very much. <laughs> but I'll tell you what a lot of people don't know is the relationship that Eric Heckman, the owner of Tani and I have. So not only have we had some unbelievable talks here in the restaurant, uh, one of my old vices, which I've stopped now, is smoking cigars. And so we've had some great cigar <laughs> talks over at the Cigar Club at the Ritz-Carlton. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, you've probably sensed from these episodes of The Burn that relationships matter so much. And I think we're knocking on the door of 12 years. I know Tani... 12, 12 years for sure. Yeah, Tani yeah. has been in business for 12. I've been here almost that entire 12. And it's been so fun to see the growth of the restaurant. I mean, you taught any professional sports team, whether it's the Blues, the Cardinals, or the teams who come to town, they know that they do it better than anybody else. But what I want people to, to know about you, which I think is so unique, is your passion, your heart, your fire. This is really a legacy. And legacy means so much to me, but I know we share in common losing a parent far too early in life. Right. And I'd love to hear more of, not the success of the restaurant and yeah. the fun you get to have with these sports teams <laughs> and, and celebrities who know that it doesn't get any better right. than Tani. But what I'd love to hear is your story. Where does the, the, the passion, the fire, where does this burn come for you to continue to do something that you've really done your entire life, which is to be in the restaurant industry? Yeah, so, you know, my, my it all started from years ago and like you said I have a, a parent that passed away way too early and so my burn and my passion really comes from my my humble beginnings living with my mom who's a single mom and she always had a desire to be in the restaurant world which eventually she did but I remember her watching her raise two kids by herself from a foreign country, not educated in the States, could hardly speak English, working any job she could get, two or three jobs at a time just to support us, and watching her going through that, and then also just loving life. Uh, I mean, every day I wake up, I truly love life. And it comes from seeing my dad, who was a drill sergeant in the Army, very successful, got many awards, and then had a bout with cancer, and he, it, cancer won and he died at 49. So every day I wake up, I could have the worst day in the world, but when I wake up, my eyes are open and I get up super early because I really love life. And that's where my, my drive comes from is knowing that I'm alive, I can do something, I have a purpose, and then being able to get inspired from my mom's background to do what we do today and say, you know, we've come from a very humble spot to a spot that that's you know, we've been able to build a lot of stuff and we're still building. I, it, it looks successful, but you know, it, it, I guess it depends on how you want to define success, but there's still a lot to do. But I'm driven, be, be, really those two things drive me every day. And so one of the things I admire about you, and a lot of people don't know, yeah. but it's well beyond just what happens in this restaurant. Your, your passion to serve kids. A lot of people don't yeah. know, you were a theology major, right? So you could, <laughs> we could break out into a sermon right now. Yeah, yeah. And so it's amazing what you've done to go and give back at your church every single week, which mm -hmm. takes a big commitment. You're running a restaurant. Most people would say, I'm running a restaurant, I'll go attend service, yeah. but to go and give back to the youth to do these things. Right. And then to go and teach at a local university. Yeah. So where is it that, that the, the whole capacity, like I love capacity, uh -huh. so does that burn fuel you in all these areas beyond the it, restaurant? It like how do you find the time? Because yeah. I know people watching are saying, I don't have time to do the basic things and you're right. choosing to do all this extra. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do have passion for it all. Um, it just comes from, I mean, I, I, I just love to be able to participate, to be involved. Um, you talk about ca capacity, I just feel like we have a lot of capacity every single day and we choose to how we want to fill up that day. 
Um, and I, I want to give back a lot. I want to see other people see what I do and get inspired from what I do and maybe try to attain something, if not greater. I mean, we, we employ a lot of people also. And I always tell people who are employed here that I, I love to see them grow beyond what they do here. I mean, if someone has to quit and, and needs, and, but they're bettering themselves because they have a new opportunity, I love it. I, even if they're great, I, I want to see people grow. I want to see people enhance, enhance themselves because that's what I did, and I still am. I mean, it doesn't stop. I feel like there's a lot of things that I could keep working on, and I try to every single day. I educate myself every day. I read every day. I meditate every day. Uh, I see what I can be better at every single day. And that, that's just what I do, and I love to do that. So to give back to the youth, to give back to kids, to give them some great examples of what I've been through, lessons learned, good and bad, um, it really drives me. It really does. So you may be upset with me over this one, but I, I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna ask, because I'm gonna put you on the spot and put people on the stands. Okay. So your father yeah. wrote children's books. He did. And those children's books touched your heart deeply. Because I remember yeah. our first time going to the Ritz-Carlton, you really opened up and you're like, these books are my dad. So I'm telling you, we all want to see those <laughs> books. We got kids that need to read those books. So right. what was it from those books that causes you to really say, man, there's something special in my dad's words and his thoughts? Well, so my dad, uh, even though he was an army guy, really tough drill sergeant, he, he had such a soft heart. And I saw a transformation in his life after he got out of the army. Um, he, he found faith and um, he, he always read. I mean, he's kind of a genius in, in history, but he loved this imagination and being creative. And he put all those ideas in this in these children's series. He had a four book series. And basically it was a young kid uh, going out and doing all kinds of adventures. They, he would take monotonous tasks like shoving, uh, shoveling snow in the driveway, but in his head it created its whole fantasy world. And when he, he would read those to us when I would go visit him, because my parents were divorced early, and when we visit him, he would read those to us every night, mm -hmm. and then he would keep expanding on them, improving them. And back in that day, uh, publishing a book was a little bit harder. There wasn't really self-publishing, so he sent it off to a couple publishers, didn't quite work out. They wanted him to fix it, but before he really had the time to fix them and send them back, he got, he got about with cancer. And so I still have the, the, the manuscripts from him, and I really do wish one day to get those published in honor of him just because they're so good to me. Um, and, it, and just giving homage back to my dad and what he's meant to me and what he's, and you know, he's part of my inspiration. Um, to see what he's done, he, he's a huge part of, of why I live and why I love to live. See, that's why I think when I think back to my mom facing amyloidosis, losing her life way too early, your yeah. father, you know, neither your mom nor, or my, my mom, your dad lost. Right. Right? It's right. actually, we get the opportunity to continue yeah. the fight. And it's one of the reasons why we do this show is for people to connect to. I don't think they realize, like, when you stay connected to your burn, like, you fight through so much pain. And I know yeah. running a restaurant, we've had talks. <laughs> it, it is not easy, right? No, no, Doing no. the things I've done in my life. It's the yeah. times I've been knocked down where I reconnected to those yeah. lessons I've learned that caused me to say, I can get up one more time than I've been knocked down, and I'm going to keep right. fighting. And your industry is a tough, tough industry. It is. It is. It's a fight every day. I mean, this industry, uh, it's one building, but you have literally a different scenario every single day. Different customers, a, a slew of different employees, different shifts. Uh, and, and when you're popular and when you're in high demand, uh, the volume that you put out, it's just a tough industry. And, and it, it's, I wouldn't say for many people to get into it unless you know it very well, but it's one thing that I've gotten into and I absolutely love because I love people, I love interacting with people, but it is a daily grind. And if I didn't have some motivation behind me to get up in the morning and to do this every day, I don't think I would have been able to last as long as I have. I've, I worked in the restaurant industry prior to owning, but even working is, is a stressful thing and then owning it for as long as we have, um, you have to be driven with something. You can, I feel like you have to have a sense of purpose for something because just to do it to say, well, I own a restaurant, after so many years, you know, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it anymore because it is, it's a grind. And in order to get through that daily grind, the bad days, you know, service was bad or whatever. There's so many variables that we go through to, to get over that, to 
then go back and do it the next day. Nobody likes to have a bad service or you know have multiple complaints in one in one day. But when you do that, you've, you've got to pick yourself up and you've got to have that drive and perseverance to say, okay, we may have messed up uh, you know, in ABC, but let's create some solutions and let's, let's fix it, let's solve it, and let's go forward and move from it and learn from it, and let's just grow. And uh, yeah, and so I have purpose. And that's why I think it's what, what helps me out in this industry that's so tough is, is I do live with purpose between faith between coming from the humble beginnings with my mom, you know, seeing my dad die at, at, at a young age of 49, I live for purpose. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate our relationship. You know, it's been, it's been fun. And yeah. there's so many, there's a lot more of these roles yeah. that, uh, that I'll be consuming, <laughs> a lot more of our, our great talks together. And I right. Everybody pulls from listening that importance of purpose and staying connected to your story. And I've yeah. always admired that you've stayed so well, I appreciate tightly it. Yeah. knit to your parents' story. Now, a couple of things we got to tell you. This role right here, before we wrap up, this role is the coach. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you naming a role after me. Our kids are always in here with me. Right. They love the fact you stay connected to your burn and that you keep working hard. But this role, the coach, I got to taste this thing for you guys. This is unbelievable. Thank you for doing this. This You're is just a welcome. reflection that I spend way too much money in this restaurant. And well, remember, <laughs> remember though, I challenged you on this because remember we were talking about when, when you wrote a couple books yep. and you had some success and you're like, okay, if I make this certain list, best selling list, and you did, and then we made the role for you. So I was, so tr I was trying to remain humble through this, but uh, no, so, no, so no. yes, let's it is. Let, let's, let's, let's let facts be facts. You earned, you earned this because of your success in writing all your books. Well, in continued support of you, I'm going to tell you, whoever is watching this episode, if you are in St. Louis, you travel to St. Louis, all you have to do, you come see Eric and you say, I watched you guys on the burn and I will buy you a coach role. So hopefully that tab is a big old tab and knowing you, he's probably going to be like, well, I'll give, I'll give most of it to charity because we'll, yeah. we'll bounce that thing back and forth. But I'm telling you, come see Eric, check out the coach. The coach is on me. You guys can tell we have fun. He takes care of his people. Even the details, if you guys know from our Instagram account, at Continued Fight, black and red. And when Jimmy and Jenny and Eric designed this role, they even put the eggs on here black and red. So they pay attention to detail. You take care of people. And uh, man, I love our friendship thank so you, much. Man. So I thanks so much you. for having me. Yeah. So let's taste thanks. this thing for everybody. You get first bite. <laughs> Nothing like it. That's a good roll. <laughs>